For any basketball team, a new season is an opportunity to embrace the challenges of a long and demanding season, to see new leaders rise to the top, to watch new faces come into focus, to put the past behind them and face the new horizon ahead. For the Oakland University men's basketball team, this is not just a new season, but a new era for the program. At the conclusion of the 2012-2013 campaign, the university's athletic department left the Summit League to join the Horizon League, a move that brings a whole new set of challenges and opportunities for Greg Campy in his 30th year as head coach. It was a no-brainer for us. You, from a competitive standpoint in men's basketball, you go from the 19th to 20th best league in the country to the 10th to 12th best best league in the country of, over a long period of time. Um, that's a huge jump. Um, you go from a league that was a plain league and you're gone all the time and missing class all the time to we can bust to most of the places. Well, instead of going all the way to South Dakota and all the way to the other places, you know, it's right around you know, my hometown, my home state where my family come watch me and Oakland fans can come support more. That's what we enjoy. It's different. Um, I mean, knowing that you don't have to go negative 50 degrees to South North Dakota in the winter. But, uh, but it's nice because everything's closer. You know, our parents can come, drive. They're all driving distance. They're not far. Um, I think it's a better conference. All the teams from top to bottom are very well-rounded teams. So I just, I just enjoy that, and it's, it should be a lot more fun. I think it's a good move. You know, uh, you know better competition, uh, bigger teams. Uh, it's more, you know, it's, it's a bigger stage, you can say. Uh, it just gives people a chance to get, get that exposure, you know, get the Oakland name out there. I think it's a great move just for Oakland University in general. Um, you know, the Horizon League is a tremendous league. Um, Competition-wise, it's, you know, I think a bump up and it's uh, more well-known than the Summit League um, just across the country. Um, so, you know, we're really excited to be a part of the Horizon League. Um, you know, I think it's just a great move for us. The move to the Horizon League has already cemented a new rivalry close to home, with a couple of looming dates already circled on the 2014 calendar. Coach Camby has that, that, that rivalry with Detroit. Uh, one of our goals is to sweep Detroit, so Detroit is, is marked down. Yeah, I mean, this one's right down the road, you know, 25 minutes round down, down 75. It's just a big, huge rivalry that's going to bring, attract a lot of cloud. Our arena's going to sell out, their arena's going to sell out. We're trying to bring our student section to their arena, so I mean, it's going to be an exciting game. In the old days when we were Division Two, it was a pretty friendly, played a lot, and it was pretty friendly. And then some things have happened, and some, you know, some fires have been built, and some things have been said, and you know, all the things that make a good rivalry. Now we get to play the games, and you know, if they beat us ten years in a row, they'll shut me up. Of course, if we win, I'm not that easy to shut up, am I? I think it's just great for the area, you know, just to have two teams, um, you know, Detroit and Oakland, within. 35 miles of each other. Um, I think it's, it's great for college basketball, it's great for the Horizon League, and it's just great for the area of Detroit. One thing that did not change for the Golden Grizzlies at the start of the 2013-2014 season was a grueling road schedule early on, heading south, then west, and back again, including three matchups against ranked opponents North Carolina, UCLA, and Gonzaga. The team logged 9,000 miles in a three-week span. Just being on a roll for that long, being in hotels, you know, at the hotel, you know, you know after a while, you know, it's, you know, being at home doing some homework sounded pretty nice, you know. So it, 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 was, it, was a long, it was a long journey in the beginning. You know, there were long trips, you know, but it was fun playing in North Carolina, UCLA, Cal, Gonzaga, those big arenas, Indiana. You know, just having, being in that atmosphere, playing against those teams, seeing where we compare and match up. And some of those games were really close, you know, we had a chance to win it. And just being playing against those ranked teams just helps us in the future against those Horizon Leagues and other league opponents. All of those frequent flyer miles were traded in for a welcome trip home and an arena contest against the one loss Ohio Bobcats. And we've really got to start this game inside out. We really got to get, get to the free throw line, get number five a couple fouls. All right, get the ball at the basket. Inside out. Okay. Anybody have any questions? There's a steal by Dante Williams. He is off to the races. Dante throws it down with two hands. We got to be in the gaps. 
We got to do everything right, and we got to rebound their miss. All right? Bader for three. And it's through Travis Bader. Of course, steps back. With the spin going to the rim, lays it up oh. and lays it in. And one, Mitch Benzinger. What about this kid here today? Listen to this stat. Only twice in the game did they score on consecutive possessions. Only two times in the whole game did they score on consecutive possessions. That's why you won. And that's why you can beat anybody. All right? Because we're going to have nights where we shoot like that for some reason. But I do know this about this team. There's going to be nights where we make everything, too. And if we can defend like that, we can go anywhere and beat anybody in the Horizon League. What a win. What a way to win a game. All right? There's a lot of people in this league that were questioning you. All right. Well, now they're going to go, what? Great job. Start getting that right mind right now. And I don't care where we at and who we playing. We're going at it. All right? score three times in a row, we're going to zone. So let me know if they score three times in a row. Change is one of the key ingredients in college athletics. Well-known faces move on and new ones arrive with every freshman class. For Oakland's Team 47, while there are still some familiar faces, one only has to look to the starting five to see that this is a different team from his predecessor. Every year is different, you know. Each team takes on a personality of their own because your leaders change. So what's different about this team? Well, we're, we're, trying, we're struggling to try and find our way. Um, the good is, is there's a lot of natural talent and ability there. Uh, this year, we know uh, we come in uh, really a higher leader, different leadership with uh, Travis Bader coming in, with Drew Valentine leaving, you know. I think we're more diversified with Tommy McCune coming in after his uh, transfer from West Virginia. So he helped us, he's helping us a lot. We got Dante who stepped up a lot. You know, Mitch definitely coming in from a walk-on, coming in who is doing very well, you know, has the best shooting percentage probably in our league and definitely on our team for three points. We have a freshman point guard who, you know, with the loss of Ryan Bass, got thrown into the fire immediately. That's been a tough deal when you've got to go play Carolina, Gonzaga, UCLA, and Cal right out your first four games. And he's handled it well. He's, take, he's taken some beatings, um, handled it well, uh, learning what I want. The biggest beating he's probably taken is from me. Um, because that guy's so important to me and you have a special relationship with that, that point guard, especially one who could be there for four years. Um, getting better. So you're going to love watching him play. Big, strong kid. Get to the rim. Uh, run our dribble drive the way we want it. Kay's doing a great job. You know, he's really leading his team off on offense. You know, he's doing a great job. He's poised. He's not scared playing in those big arenas. You know, he's doing a great job assisting us as a team and really leading us as a point guard. I think this team has a lot of talent. The biggest challenge is putting it together. You know, just the other team that I've been on, you know, you got to put it together. And, um, you know, I think this team's kind of getting it down a little better. But, you know, with Tommy McCune, um, obviously he sat out last year. But the talent he has and the length he has and the ability he has to play this game is, you know, unbelievable. And, and so it's just, it's just really meshing together and putting that together. And I think, you know, we're starting to do a better job of that. And, and everybody on this team really loves to be around each other and really likes each other. So that's, that's a great thing with any team. For all of the new faces on this year's Golden Grizzlies squad, one of the most important is on the bench. When assistant coach Jeff Tungate moved over to become the head coach of the women's team in the offseason, that left a hole in head coach Greg Campy's support staff and big shoes to fill. Yeah, I was very pleased for him because Jeff's now a Division I head coach, and that's been a dream of his. So it was tough to lose Jeff because we'd been together for so long, and he, he was someone that I, I felt akin to. I think his strengths were my weaknesses and vice versa. Oakland went on a national search to find an assistant coach to fill exactly what the Grizzlies needed. Along the way, one name continued to pop up, Brandon Weems. Coach Calipari from Kentucky, um, who I've gotten fairly close to over the last uh, five to six years through the dribble drive offense that we run, um, called me and, and recommended him. He had been the graduate assistant at Kentucky for a couple years. 
and he was now at Drexel. And so we brought him in and interviewed him. He's young, he's upper vessel, he's a kid that, you know, I think really represents Oakland well out on the road. Meet Brandon Weems. Born and raised in Akron, Ohio, his championship resume is impressive. He played college ball at Walsh University, helping them to an NAIA title and was on the Kentucky staff when they won it all. Oh, and by the way, he played with a four-time NBA MVP in high school at St. Mary's St. Vincent's. I think he played next to me. <laughs> no, I played uh, high school basketball with LeBron James. Uh, we grew up together since we were six years old. We became friends and we played on the same Pee Wee football team. And uh, we've been like brothers ever since. That is uh, intangible that you just can't, you know, I can't go out and find that. I mean, he, he it's a fortunate thing that he has that, but kids want to hear, they want to hear stories about uh, LeBron. They want to, you know, I mean, they want to talk to Brandon about it. When he speaks about, you know, this is what you need to do if you want to move on from Oakland and play professionally, those kids are going to listen because he's got a pipeline to the greatest player in the game. Weems has hit the ground running and will add to the program on the recruiting side as well as out on the court. What he's done a great job of looking at what we do and then taking what he's known through his career as a player and with other coaches he's worked with and then tried to supplement with we, what we do with great ideas. But Weems knows he is still young in his coaching career and is thrilled with the opportunity to learn from one of college coaching's best. Canby's big on to why do we do things and who knows why we do shoot arounds. Somebody from Los Angeles Lakers who recently just passed away decided to come up with the idea of a shoot around. And Campy says, you know, it's about you making sure that you're ready for the game. There's nothing I can do uh, to get you ready. You have to be able to know what, what it takes to get yourself ready. He knows it's all about the players and he pays attention to details. And he knows that if he does, if we do what uh, we're supposed to do, it will be fine on the court. It's not really about the opponent, it's about us. And I like that about him. Just as freshmen and transfer students bring new dimensions to a team at the beginning of a new season, the changing of the guard that comes with the loss of senior leaders means that, for a team to truly persevere and thrive, new leaders must emerge and carry the team forward. Already a key component of the Golden Grizzlies offense and a Division I three-point shot leader last season, the new challenge for Travis Bader in 2013-2014 was to lead the team forward without Drew Valentine all while maintaining his status as one of the hardest working student athletes on campus. The spotlight is on Travis Bader. The senior from Okemos is the leader of the Golden Grizzlies, even if it's a role that he embraces somewhat reluctantly. I feel like I've been here forever, but it's, it's weird that, you know, this is my last year and um, I've kind of understood that, you know, as I've grown and, and um, watch guys before me that I need to take on more of a leadership role. You know, it's hard. I'm not a natural born leader, so it is, it is difficult. While leading may be hard, this is what Travis Bader makes look easy. The guy who wears jersey number three is closing in on the Division I record for most three-pointers made in a career. Not bad for a kid who didn't have any Division I offers coming out of high school besides Oakland. As you'd expect, Bader is doing his best to deflect any attention away from himself. People are coming up to me, you know, whether it's walking on campus or whether it's Twitter or whether it's, you know, after a game. People are constantly asking and they're, you know, where I'm at and how many more I need. So it is tough, um, but at the same time, you know, being a leader of this team, I have to forget about you know, individual accolades and, and focus on the team. Bader's marksmanship is the product of lots and lots of practice. 
Coach Greg Campy preaches consistency and Bader embodies it. With Travis Bader, he's the poster boy for that. Consistent, always in the gym, always working. He could go 12 for 12, he'll be in the gym the next day. He could go 0 for 12, he'll be in the gym the next day. He has no rear view mirror. He's always looking forward and it's consistent. With that kind of mentality, it may not surprise you that Bader completed his undergraduate degree in three years and is currently working on his master's. So the gym isn't the only place he puts in lots of hours. You know, I push myself to be a great basketball player and I work hard at it. Um, you know, and I also want to be a good student because I know, you know, basketball is not a guarantee. Uh, I want to play professional when I'm done here at Oakland, but at the same time, anything could happen. After making it to the NCAA tournament as a freshman, Travis Bader would love to bookend his college career with another trip to the big dance. And if it's up to him, Bader's time at Oakland will be defined not by how many threes he's made, but how hard he's worked. I want to be known as someone who, you know, won games and worked his tail off. Um, I want Coach Camp to be able to talk to recruits. I just want kids to see that, that you know, anything is possible if you work hard and put your mind to it. If there was any proof of the strain a tough road schedule places on the student part of student athlete, it was boarding a plane one more time to Bloomington, Indiana for an exam week showdown with the Hoosiers on their home court. Watch the screen. And remember the schedule. The whole purpose behind that schedule is to build a team that can win the Horizon League Championship. And that's on me. And I've got to learn and we'll see what we what what We'll see what changes we make. Saturday afternoon, you're playing in prime time. You're playing the number five team in the country. You get another chance. That's the great thing about the schedule, and that's the great thing about this, this game of college basketball. Are we going to step up and make shots? Are we going to do the things that we did wrong tonight? So are you going to do things right? You get another opportunity, another chance. I told you after the Ohio game, this is your week. This is your week. You're playing the number five team in the country on a neutral floor on national TV. You have a chance today on national TV to, do, to erase everything that's happened up till today. You can erase it all. The Oakland men's basketball team has a lot to look forward to this season. But before they could set their sights on their first run through the Horizon League schedule, one more matchup against a ranked opponent remained. This time, however, it would be the Golden Grizzlies' turn to play host on a national stage. Your home state, maybe the best program in college basketball in the last 15 years. Been to more Final Fours than anybody else. And you have a chance to beat them on national TV. Bader for three. Of course, Travis Bader. Kane's ahead of the pack and he will dunk it. The whole season can change today. You're 20 minutes away from changing everybody's perception. No one will remember Carolina, Indiana, any of those games. No one will remember anything. But today, if you can finish this thing, let's go finish it. Out to Appling, wide open for three, and he buries it. Price, all alone for three, and he buries it. 
That was an NBA three from Travis Trice. Game out. Good game, Ben. Good game, coach. Good game, yeah. Yeah. Good game Ben Fowler. While taking the green and white to the brink at the Palace yet again could be viewed as a moral victory on the heels of a tough road schedule, it was clear that the team needed a notch in the win column with Missouri Valley Conference visitors Illinois State arriving at the arena just two days later and the start of the Horizon League schedule approaching. It's a really good win. This team just beat the number 25 team in the country. They went to Northwestern and won at Northwestern. And you didn't just squeak by them. You dominated them. That second half, you just dominated them. Believe in yourself, believe in this team, believe in Oakland and what we do and everything will be good. We're in a new conference and no one knows who we are. And there's not a lot of respect or, uh, you know, clamor about Oakland and with the start we've gotten off it's even worse and our theme this year is you know we, we just talk about we're going into a lot of new houses and what are people going to say about us once they've seen us because right now they're not saying a lot of great things about us but they haven't seen us yet we're still going to go in their places and so it's all about the new league and all about competing in the new league and and what are people going to say about Oakland in March. Catch Oakland basketball at the arena as the men's and women's teams begin Horizon League play. For tickets to all Oakland basketball games, call 248-370-4000 or visit OUGrizzlies.com.